do actors come to you when they're thinking about joining the MCU and saying, like, what am I getting myself into? Some do. Um, I've had I've had some people ask about it. What do you um, say? What's the stock kind of like? <laughs> do you really want it? I mean, of course I do. I say, just give them one. <laughs> <laughs> leave some space for yourself no yeah just give them one that's what i say prepare your ears humans happy sad confused begins now hey guys welcome to another edition of happy sad confused i'm josh horowitz thanks as always for watching or listening however you're consuming this my guest today she loves true crime, dark magic, and cooking. Yes, I do. Sure. <laughs> three for three? Yeah. Uh, it's Lizzie That's Olsen. how I describe myself. Uh, did I miss anything? Anything on the resume we should add? Um, no, I guess not. <laughs> I was going to say... No, it's gonna make a bad joke. That that's a, that's would, a, I would just then you would I, regret then that we got I the regret cut. It and yeah, then yeah. I'm like, why? Let's not do let's that. N let's not go down that rabbit hole already. Um, remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss this amazing conversation with returning champion Elizabeth Olson. Um, it's been. Do you know how long it's been since the full fledged podcast has been in your orbit? You no. and I. No. 2015 was our last like in depth soul searching conversation Lizzie. oh my gosh i listened back i have no idea what happened to me <laughs> you mean just just no, metaphorically no, or literally no, or i mean like i don't know what i don't even know what was happening in my life in 2015. let me tell you i will fill you in oh cool that's uh, fun <laughs> i listened back you were promoting something uh the last true life story you did which was age of ultron yes. obviously yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course you were also marveling at the fact it was uh you were in new york in my office at um Anonymity, like yeah, no, no one recognizes me. Recognizes me. I'm in Central Park. Oh yeah, that's funny. Has that changed? Yeah, that's changed. <laughs> it changed real fast with Wandavision. What is? Yeah, it happened kind of overnight. You felt it relatively. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't overnight. It definitely was a gradual thing. The more I was in Marvel stuff, the longer I was in them, and I think Wandavision reached a different large. I maybe not larger because I feel like the Marvel fans are pretty large, but I think because I was more front and center or right. something, uh, where I'm usually part of an ensemble, and so that 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 it, that shifted. Yes, anonymity shifted. I literally just ended a conversation right before talking to you, where I was like, I miss that. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, of course. Do you find yourself are the conversations like? Do you find people want to engage with you on? Not arguments, maybe that's too strong a word, but discussions about Wanda, for instance, they have takes? No, I think that it's more just, uh, pe it's like, I think it's, there's this, I remember being in the back of a New York taxi cab, uh, what's his name, Sandy? Oh yeah, um, the, the film critic, uh, yes. Sandy Kenyon. Yes, and he was interviewing Michael Shannon, and <laughs> he asked him about like what the worst thing is that people say to him, and it's, um, <laughs> oh, are you an actor? Are you that guy in that movie? And I was like, why is that such a big deal? Because they like can't remember what you're in. But I understand what he right. means. It's kind of like, oh, wait, am I supposed to now explain to you why you think you might know me? Right. There's that that's awkward because then you're like, oh, yeah, well, you know, I'm either like, oh, no, we've never met before. I say that a lot. Right. Um, or if I'm grocery shopping and they ask, or like if it comes up, like, are you so and so? Sometimes I just lie, and uh, other times you just smile and you just say, "Oh, thank you, nice to meet you." What's your name? And then that's it. I just, I, it's n none of it's offensive. None sure. of it's bad. It's just not. You're not uh, blending into crowds, which is how I prefer to see the world. Right. Yeah. And looking back, so considering that conversation way back when, do you feel like, I don't know, were you overly optimistic that things weren't going to change? Did you know things in your heart of hearts were going to change? Or did you feel like just the nature of the kind of projects you were going to gravitate towards outside of Marvel that, yeah, I mean, I'm going to be able to just do my thing and it's going to be... Well, I chill. still think it's going to change back because I just think people's attention spans are so short. Yeah. Um, and I just everyone's going to forget that that I was in any of these things. And in a couple of years, I'll be having or five, whenever. How much time has it been? It's been too long. It's been nine years. Hopefully it'll be sooner than that. <laughs> but in like five years right. or two years, I'll be like, oh, yeah, nah, no one cares at all anymore. I'm blending into walls just the way I like it. Okay, um, so, so, so I, I yeah. think it will revert back in some way because it just will. 
so okay so before we get into to love and death i do want to reminisce about another point which is um we've had some fun times shooting not only interviews over the years but sketches yes. and one of them i don't know if we've ever had the debrief on this but um one was with aubrey yes it was aubrey plaza one of my favorites yes mine, um, mine too uh human being and sketches and it was for ingrid goes west another favorite that was Love, a fun one obs like obsessed um and as you may or may not recall in that sketch there is a line where you are kind of the joke is you are ruining the end of Avengers and you say everybody dies <laughs> <laughs> and then Thanos is like give me the infinity gauntlet and Scarlet Witch is like I don't think so whoa, whoa, whoa. tell me you did not just ruin the ending of Infinity War no because everyone dies Ugh. Lizzie <laughs> I thought everyone knew that. Now, this was shot, <laughs> chronologically speaking, a year before Infinity War came out. Oh, so you probably shot it. Uh, yes. This is, <laughs> I wrote that line for you. You didn't seem to bat an eye. I'm curious, can you recall any hesitation? Like, oh, this is going to get me into deep shit. I'm ruining the end of this movie, essentially, a year before it comes out. No, I think I, I, think I thought, like, oh, people aren't going to think this is the ending because I'm saying this <laughs> guy. <laughs> like this is gonna this is this is really like I don't know what's it called when you get them off your trail right right um that's what I felt like I was I think that maybe that was the thought I had that's might be giving myself too much credit if I thought about it at all <laughs> which there's a potential I didn't it's really funny because yeah like, after it came <laughs> out they it, it, every, after it came out it starts to resurface <laughs> in my social media feeds where people be like oh my god she ruined the movie we now realize she ruined the movie wow. a year ago <laughs> You know what? It's fascinating. People talk about, like, I don't know. When I say people, I mean other actors have always made jokes about, you know, there's like S.H.I.E.L.D. or Kevin Feige will like come out and right, right. get mad at you or you'll be reprimanded. I have a feeling I've ruined multiple things many times and no one's ever talked to me about it. So I think it's fine. <laughs> on the scale of the, on the Ruffalo scale, as we call it, you're still fine. Yeah, but I think Ruffalo does it as a bit. Yeah, now it's a bit. Maybe yeah. I don't think it originally was a bit. You probably. don't. Now okay. he's playing into it. Okay. I mean, he's a pretty clever, funny guy, so it might have always been a bit. <laughs> but I don't want to like take that away from him if it if it you know if it was authentic. <laughs> uh, let's talk about your amazing new limited series, yeah. Love and Death. It's fantastic. Uh, you, Jesse Plemons, who I uh, absolutely adore, yeah, me Billy too. Rabe, um, Patrick Fugit. Uh, yeah, Pat's so good. Amazing. He's so good in this show. So this is, what should, okay, this is always the debate. What should folks know going in, you think? Um, I think don't, don't. Don't uh, Google Wikipedia the whole story. Well, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. But also like go in not thinking that you're about to watch like a true crime drama or right. something. That's not really what we're doing. It's not really, our show's more of like a profile on um, the mentality of people in this town um, during this time. And it's and the character I play is in a way uh, progressive because she really lives by what she pro projects into the world, right? Or onto the world, like she really is about externals, as as we have become as a society, where it's a lot of presentational. Um, we, we are able to control how we present ourselves to the world. And that is an important factor in this woman's life. And this is Candy, Candy, Candy. Montgomery, yes, who. Um, so this is the setting is the late seventies yes. Texas. Thank you. You're doing. Thank you. I'm Trying sorry. to help her along. <laughs> it's on the max, as they call it, as the kids call it now. Um, <laughs> HBO Max. HBO, HBO Max. Still HBO, HBO Max. Oh, it's still HBO Max. Still HBO as of Max. Today? Okay. Well, I think on. I I don't know when they're making that shift, but on my on my. It's called a television at home. <laughs> <laughs> the tube. Yeah. Um, it says HBO Max. Right, so you're in order with that. to get to you the signed show. on to HBO Max. You didn't sign up for this Max crap. No, and no one's told me that we need to start talking about Max. Okay. So I feel like it's HBO Max and, until sometime in May, right, Marla? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair so enough. I think we're still safe with calling it HBO Max. We got through that. Okay. What were we saying? Okay. Oh, so late seventies, Texas. Yeah. And yes, Candy, Silicon Prairie. Um, what I think is interesting is, yeah, as you allude to, she is someone that wants more. She yes. wants more out of life and yes. doesn't necessarily have the tools or the right ideas of how to yes. go about it. Yes, to say. she has a very romanticized um, vision of what that could be, and one of and one of the romanticized visions is a is a big old affair, romantic affair, um, and so. But that and that is something that she seeks out actively, 
Methodically, very methodically, direct, directly, very and direct. directly, which you gotta, uh, you know, you gotta respect that directness. I, I certainly do. I was gonna say, did you, in your dating life, did you have that kind of directness? Like, I would like to date you now. I wouldn't think it we be should... amazing if we did that though? And we were like, and I want to stop. Right. Like, I know we're trying to be kind to each other, but instead of us like ignoring each other, yeah. let's just agree to the stop. Passive aggressive, quiet. Yeah, the ghosting, yes. as they say, as the kids say, as the kids say. Yeah. Um, as Anna Darmus and Chris Evans say. <laughs> so we're promoting that too. Apple. <laughs> TV Plus, I'm not check in that. it out. <laughs> Team player. Didn't even know where you could see it, but that's where I no. guess you can see it. Uh, but I, uh, yeah. So she she propositions Jesse Plemons's character Alan Gore with an affair, and it ends up being a very uh, different kind of affair than you could imagine. It becomes right. more of a friendship, which might actually be more dangerous than a physical affair. Some may argue because there's a lot of intimacy that they're anyway, getting. Yeah. Mm-hmm from each other that they don't get from their partners in their lives. Um, and that affair then leads to a murder. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah. So, and this, the, the, look, this is inspired by true events based on, on yes. uh, and obviously, but there's there's humor in this as well. Yes. And yet you're also dealing with some, with murder, with some yes. horrible situations. Yes, we're trying to embrace this these absurd circumstances and situations um that these interesting characters find themselves in with hopefully not completely letting people off the hook of the fact right. that there was actually a death that affected multiple families that are around today we mentioned the actors friday night lights fan jesse plemons Have you I, watched it? I watched a couple episodes okay. when i was in texas just because i was curious where like baby plemons baby. started <laughs> uh <laughs> But yeah, and I, I felt like I had to really commit to a lot of hours if I were to watch it. It's a lot. Watch That's it. like an 80 hour so, commitment, I know. Yeah, so I just, you know, watched a couple and I was, and it was also, I just loved the way it was shot. It oh, just felt great. so of its time. Yeah, yeah. Like this like handheld television kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. thing. It, it, I, I totally got what they, were, what they were doing with it and it was, it was fun to watch it now as opposed to when it was happening the, the the milieu is really fascinating because like we get to see you in these contexts that i've never seen you in before uh volleyball i don't know if that's been a part of your life huge part of my life i was on a i was on a traveling team when i was Seriously? younger yeah age 11 to 14. oh so this must have brought it all back yeah it was really fun to get to play volleyball <laughs> I had so much fun were you very competitive as a as a kid i was very competitive yeah i was very very competitive i even had like a a private coach at one point um i was like you know it was a starting varsity setter when i was a freshman okay. and we won league all right if you, you and i don't even know what that means it anymore sounds but impressive. we won the league we were in what's your outlet your your athletic outlet now are you a pickleball player oh my god you... i've only done it twice what a fun game i'm really played. late I'm to really, it I'd, i want to play oh it's worth it yeah it's a great time yeah <laughs> i started playing with my little sister and her boyfriend and it's so much fun uh, really, I re- highly recommend it. Not like it. Not like they need the endorsement no, my, from me. No, they're the hottest thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that was fun. Uh, I, I am, I'm very. How do I, how do I let out my physical? I mean, I, I work out a lot because I think it's fun. Uh, well, that's a whole nother conversation that I can't get behind. But okay, you yeah. think it's fun to work out just generally? I think it's just because I, I played sports and danced my whole life. Got it. And I think when I went to college and became an inanimate object, I was like <laughs> starting to get. Years, to, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I started to get depressed. My mom was like, "Well, Lizzie, are you exercising?" And she was right. I wasn't. <laughs> and it makes you feel good. You know what? Those endorphins are real. How close an impression is that to your mom? Her voice. Uh, I think I. I mean, she's she's usually a higher pitch voice than that. Really? Yeah, she's a very very fun voicemail person. Like I love listening to her voicemails. What are her typical? Hi, lizard. It's your mom. Like that's what she sounds like. But I think higher. Lizard. Yeah. That was that's and from it's childhood? all every every voicemail starts with Hi, lizard. It's your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Did everybody call you lizard growing up or just mom? Uh, fam- family and best friend. Yeah, called me lizard. And now Robbie sometimes calls me lizard, my husband. Um, yeah, so when I was in Godzilla, my birthday cake was a lizard. Perfect. Yep. We were talking before we started. Um, I now have, uh, by dint of research, I know you are not necessarily the biggest fan of roller coasters, thanks to the great Colbert interview you did. Um, <laughs> there is a sequence that, yeah, has jumped out at me like, oh, this is... 
it's always a fun thing to talk about. Like, how do you act while you're in that kind of circumstance? I and couldn't act while I was in it. It was, I was, it was just survival. It was only it was when we started on. going in reverse where you can, like, it's a two minute video. When we start going in reverse, I start trying to protect, like put candy back on and, but I'm like talking manically to Jesse the entire time. So it's not even usable because we're not, we're filming a montage. We're not supposed to be talking. So, okay. I want to just dive in a little deeper. Did you, do you fear death? Do you just fear na nausea is just as like physical, uh, intellectual torture? What is, what is the problem? So when I was younger, I had a theory that my friends don't want to be on a roller coaster that I'm on. Cause that's the moment there's going to, I had just this, idea I, right. I don't like things that go fast okay i don't like this idea of i don't like adrenaline rushes okay um so i'm you know if someone driving too fast in a car like i tell drivers um you know what you can slow down i don't i don't i yeah. don't like getting places quickly like <laughs> we're good <laughs> lateness is kind of my thing yeah, i rather i rather get <laughs> there and be than die yeah, exactly. uh, and so i do have a fear of accidents yeah. i guess when with fast things yeah um, I do know where that comes from, but I will not be sharing that on a, in a public <laughs> oh forum. Gosh. But it does come yeah. from something when I was a little girl that didn't happen to me, but that happened to others. Okay. And so it's just ingrained in me. Got it. Safety first. And I, di I didn't find roller coasters to be safe. So when I would go to um, whatever they're called, amusement parks with my friends, I would always just wait in line and just yeah. like then walk on and walk off and like wave goodbye. And then I would sometimes they'd be like, oh, you got to go on this one. You got to go on this one. I'll be like, okay, I am. And then I would just walk on and walk off and they'd be right. like, oh, Lizzie. Like, uh, <laughs> oh, Lizzie did it again. And it just was something that I just, I did not feel safe doing. Right. And there's just a part of me that thinks it's the way I'm going to die. I don't know. <sighs> And so Going it was dark, really yeah. embarrassing. And it wasn't, I was saying before we started filming, like I wasn't trying to um, play into the dramatics or the attention or whatever, but like I just started burst, I just started crying when before we had to shoot this stupid montage, like a few frames of the whole show. And it was monstrous in my mind and it was really embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> and now it's funny. Now it's fun. Now at least it's a good talk show story. Yeah. Uh, which is all that matters in the which end. Which is all that matters. <laughs> I, it's always so annoying when they're like, anything funny happened on set that you can show us? Any behind the scenes footage? And now I have one. I'm like, well, I, I thought usually I was going to die and I've got tape to show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy, world. It's helpful. <laughs> um, I assume a, a more enjoyable uh, singing in a car. Are you somebody that enjoys singing? Love singing in a car. What's your... Anything that's on the radio? What's your go-to? Anything. <laughs> I don't even have to know the song. I love singing in a car so much. I love right. being on a freeway with the windows down. Like the amount, I don't even have to be, I can be in traffic. There are so many times I'm in traffic dancing my ass off. <laughs> and I just wonder um, if I'll ever see someone who I know right. and they'll be like, the Lizzie, awkward, like, did I just see you dancing? <laughs> Because I dance my ass off in my car how do you, and sing. While you're driving? How do you yeah, dance while driving? It's like all in your torso. <laughs> and you just, I mean, it was so fun to get to do those scenes with Candy because like I, I this love. This is in my wheelhouse, yeah. I love singing and dancing in the car. Is, is ABBA now more in the repertoire or are you? I, I could not stop. Li oh, it did happen actually. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to scare it's you. Okay, it's okay. One, I, one of the things that I... The thing with Candy that was so fun to play is that she has so much energy. And so when it was like 3.45 in the morning and I'm driving to set and I would be tired, I would play some ABBA and just, or even not just ABBA, I'd play like Sharon Von Etten or mm -hmm. whatever. I was just like playing songs that like got me going right. and got me excited. And I think it was, I was probably listening to 17 or something like that or the one she has with Angel Olsen. And, uh, driving to work on one of these like narrow dirt roads in the 45 minute or hour drive or something in with no traffic. It was just, we drove to the furthest places and <laughs> uh, got to set and our camera AC uh, told our DP instead of telling me, which she totally could have, that she saw me dancing in the car to work, <laughs> that I was behind her, and I was like jamming out. And uh, so he asked me if, if that was true, and I was like, oh my God, every morning is that true, especially playing candy. I have to have good energy. 
This is your entry point to Mamma Mia 3, the inevitable yes. end of the trilogy. Yes, yes. I play Lily James's mother this time. <laughs> <laughs> have you, you've, look, I know you loved musical theater growing up. I did, I loved it. So you haven't really gotten to embrace that side of yourself too much. I mean, you've sung no. in film before a little bit. Yes, but ba badly. Well, well, on purpose. She, I yeah. mean, that also was the best I could do. But you'd probably, I don't want to put words in your mouth, want to sing well and to I the utmost to ability. Well, yeah. That's on the list still? Oh, I don't take lessons, but I've been thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you gone up for musicals? No, never. Really? Never. Except, I mean, not since high school. That's kind of surprising. Um, Should it be? Should I be surprised? Mm, no. I was told that I sang flat starting when I was 12, and that kind of... That kind of hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I went to a uh, conservatory school in Russia, we had to sing. Right. And uh, and that was there was like a big emotional block to get me to do that in front of people because of being 12. <laughs> um, but it was really freeing to be able to do that in a class, honestly. Who do you think is a big, bigger musical theater nut, uh, you or Chris Evans? Oh, definitely not me. Definitely Chris Evans. Really? Yeah. I, I really just know like the classic movies and the ones okay. I was in. I don't really know anything about anything else. <laughs> I have, don't. You, have you sung with him? Have you had karaoke? Have you done anything? No. Okay. Are you a karaoke-er? No. Me neither. Never done it. Not into that I can't that do it publicly. Yeah. I, I don't. I. Just in your box, in your car, you'll do it, but not. Yeah. No, no. It's not for anyone. You know? <laughs> it's, for, <laughs> it's, it's really for, for me. Yeah. <laughs> I. I I think I feel eyes on me enough. I don't need yeah. to add, I don't need to put myself in that position. Hey guys, I am so excited to talk about our sponsor this week. It's HelloFresh. You know HelloFresh. You get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip trips to the grocery store. You can count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, affordable, and yes, actually fun. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Plus, it's more than just those delicious dinners. You can pick from over 40 weekly recipes and you can choose from over 100 items to round out that order. Snacks, easy lunches, desserts, pantry necessities. It all arrives together in one box on the delivery day of your choosing. Plus, it's all about quality, guys. That's why their seasonal ingredients are picked at peak ripeness. And they travel from the farm to your home in less than seven days, so you know they're fresh. I know this from experience, guys. Just the other night, we made beef flautas. They were delicious. They were seasonal. They were fresh, and they were easy to make. And most important, they were delicious. So go to HelloFresh.com slash HSC one six and use the code HSC one six for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Again, that's go to hellofresh.com slash HSC one six. Use that code HSC one six for those 16 free meals and free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. So again, again, going down memory lane, looking at the yes. math. Yes, I think we're basically we're ba yes, we're basically happy ten years of Marvel almost. You've, oh yeah, you were cast basically around ten yeah. years ago this year. Yeah, uh, the, the, uh, a little later in the year in twenty thirteen. I wow, believe. weird. And I, I know you've talked yeah, about this. I think this. I filmed it when I was twenty five, and I'm thirty four now. There you go. Math. So, math. <laughs> so, I it's I know from our past conversations. It still boggles you, like, how long this has run and, and just the different iterations. Shocked. Right. Yes. Shocked. I signed on for, like, a thing and a half. I don't... <laughs> it's, it was funny. One of the things that, again, I listened to that early conversation we had at, promoting Age of Ultron, you talked about being cast by Joss and mm -hmm. him saying to you, um, just don't Google the character. Yes. Look at how you're going to be dressed because you're not going to ever be dressed yes. like that. And then I was. And then I got to be. And I wanted to be. By then, you would come around to, like, okay, if we're doing it in this way, this makes sense. Yes. And I can have fun And then with I it. got to be in the tights and the leotard. And it was one of my favorite costumes. <laughs> <laughs> it really gave me so much joy. And also seeing Paul in his little getup was so cute. <laughs> Did WandaVision lead to any actual sitcom offers? No, but... I understand why people like filming sitcoms now because they're the most joyful things you can do. Because of you get kind of the theater buzz, like the reaction. Yeah, the you get that, but it's also you just you are a physical fool and you're trying to make each other laugh. It's just really fun. So it's like you're. It's like the chi the the 
the ham that you were as a child on stage for your parents or something right. in your backyard. That it's like you get to be that person. Yes. You get to embrace that person. And with more bells and whistles and all that kind of fun stuff. Yes. Um, any more thoughts? Speaking of that kind of environment of going back to theater more? I know. Oh, you, gosh, I want to so badly. It's been a while. Yeah, right? it's been a really long time. And the experience I had last time was not a good one. And so I really need it for myself. And doing WandaVision and doing Love and Death made me feel really good in my physical body as an actor. And I just, I feel like the best thing to do for that is theater. Um, and I need it. I'm literally, I, I planned a vacation for myself at the end of this press run to just go see a lot of theater by I've, myself. I, I've been on a run the last uh, couple of weeks in New York. I've been Ugh, seeing a lot. It's so it's the best. nurturing. Yeah. And so, yes, I want that so much. So, um, okay, so we were talking WandaVision. You yes. basically went from WandaVision almost without a rest into... Doctor Strange. Doctor it was Strange. like I had two days to pack. So, not like I had two days to <laughs> not pack being, you know. and traveled on the third. <laughs> so... Look, the WandaVision experience, amazing. And then Doctor Strange, like we know those films often are fluid. And mm -hmm. it seems like this one was a bit fluid. Like So fluid. So was that a little bit of, I don't know, how did you manage it? Did it feel? The way I managed it is I shot what they told me to, to do, and I did it. And then <laughs> I went off and filmed Love and Death while they we'll kind of filmed decide what the rest they, of yes, the movie yes. without me. And so then I like re did my, I did my voiceover work to make everything that I'd already done Actually on sense. camera make sense. <laughs> That's how we did Doctor Strange. <laughs> how much did... <laughs> That's how the cookie crumbles. <laughs> how much That's did... That's how the pie is made or whatever. <laughs> All the cooking metaphors. <laughs> how much did what I saw of Doctor Strange resemble the initial script you saw of Doctor Strange? It resembled more than I thought it was going to. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, there are definitely moments where... I, 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 there's a point in making the movie where I just stopped reading drafts. <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is just gonna change again. Can right. you just, just keep point me, me towards just the keep camera? Just keep me posted with the information yeah. I need, and you guys fill in the blanks that you need. But yeah. I'll just keep my lane. Um, Am I good or evil today? What do yeah. you do? <laughs> <laughs> it was a, that one was a wild ride. D were, were you are you protective of that character because obviously you know she's the villain of that piece? Yeah, I am. I am protective of her, and and in a way, I'm trying to make sure that the, our fans don't uh, have to watch the same thing multiple times. Like I try and keep it interesting for them, and yeah. try and. At least if something seems similar thematically, at least try and like find a different angle into it or a different way to explore it so that it doesn't just um, become repetitive for them. Right. Yeah. Uh, one, one more question about the specifics of that filming. And I think you've alluded to this before, but the sequence where you basically decimate all these like alternate Earth characters, you know, like Patrick Stewart. Oh, yes. And Krasinski. That sequence, yes. Did you know who you were murdering? It changed a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I was on that. Um, lie detector test right, for right. Vandy Fair. About John Krasinski, I think it was the yes. question, right? So um, I didn't understand that the character he played in the movie was the smartest man on the earth or right, something. Right, right, Reed Richards. And yep. they said, is this the smartest man on earth? And I just didn't understand why they would say that. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we call plausible deniability. This is good to know a little less, yes. And I was, yeah, it's, so I, so I, I wasn't even like I'm really good at like hiding a lie. Like I had no idea why they were asking me that question. Right. And I also didn't shoot with him. But I knew he he was going to be in it. Right. But he wasn't there when I was there. Yeah, because I, I did a, a the, Daniel Craig of all people did the podcast a few months back. Yeah. And I asked him about playing Balder the Brave, yes. which apparently was in the. That's offering. what I thought was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Daniel Craig? I signed up for Daniel Craig I today. I saw the art. <laughs> They, cool? <laughs> they made a costume. <laughs> <laughs> they had a design. Fluid. Marvel, that's Fluid. just how the way yeah. they roll. Yeah. It's okay. What did he say? He kind of just stared at me and said, I don't know what you're talking about, but. Oh, okay. You know. Okay. Well, shoot. I should have done that. No, I mean, that's okay. I mean, God, they, I'm so bad at this thing. <laughs> it's okay. I'm like an open book. It's horrible. <laughs> it's okay. Classic Ruffle. Classic Lizzie. Um, <laughs> So they are shooting, or maybe I've already wrapped, I don't even know, the, the Agatha show, Catherine Hahn. I'm not sure if they're finished yet. Did Aubrey come to you? Like, do actors come to you when they're thinking about joining the MCU and saying, like, what am I getting myself into? Some do. Um, I've, had, I've had some people 
ask about it. What do you um, say? What's the stock kind of like? <laughs> do you really want it? I, I mean, of course I do. I say, just give them one. <laughs> <laughs> leave some space for yourself no yeah just give them one that's what i say yeah <laughs> meaning like one project, project. yeah yeah because it's a commitment and it... yeah and i think uh that way that you have more control over um if you know if if you let's say you're like oh my god this was the most fun i've ever had and i love this character so much i want to do it again you now have more creative control yes. for the next one if it but, makes sense. you know yes don't tell no I, I, don't tell galuzzi that <laughs> business affairs at marvel <laughs> well like yeah and I, i'm not asking you for info on this because this is just a rumor floating around right now but for instance speaking of the world's smartest man the rumor is that adam driver is going to play that character what uh, read, i know which would be insane Wait, and, but why did john do it well john oh, I because think, different multiverses it, there you go okay there you go so anyone can still play it I understand now. <laughs> so whether that happens or not, uh, uh, what I'm fascinated yeah. by is like from Adam Driver's perspective, who can work with anyone. Yeah. And like, is he going to sign for nine movies? Adam Driver? Like that seems. How many like, kids does he have? Yeah, I think he has a couple. Okay. That's all. Oh, you should think college, uh, college tuition. He's doing fine. I'm sure. I think he's fine. I think <laughs> he's okay. Doing fine. <laughs> Do you? Okay. So beyond Marvel, because. You've had a run, and it sounds like it'll probably continue in some form. I know you're not going to tell me anything, but... Nor do I know anything. I know. Genuinely. Um, does, is, is there a need, like, at this point in the career to, like, sign on to another ongoing thing? Oh, gosh, no. No, and if anything, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. Yeah. It's, like, it's almost like the, I see uh, my past, and I see a road over here and a road over here, and I've been traveling down this road, and now I'm trying to like make a left-hand turn a bit. Just kind of steer back. Steer back a little bit, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, looking back, do you, I feel like you've managed it pretty damn well in, in kind I, of... I, I, I think I've tried to find my grounding along the way, but I do think that when I started having job opportunities where I it wasn't me just like, auditioning for literally everything and anything because I also in, kind of enjoy doing that. Um, I I didn't really understand how to say no to projects or how to decipher whether or not I should do something or not right. or hold off for something else. Like I didn't really have a philosophy or a plan. And I still don't really have a plan, but I have more of a philosophy, I guess. Right. And that's nice to know and that's nice to have and that's good information um, when I'm look with that looking through projects with that kind of lens and knowledge now. And, and less about career calculation but knowing the kind of story, yes. the kind of film, the kind of filmmakers that will make you happy and engaged yes. and inspired. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah, it's not about I, – I, probably the majority of the outcomes would be like how many people saw that movie? But for right. me, it would it, – it's um, – I, I need to explore certain things for myself, I think. Um, and there's just, I, I really, um, I wanna just get back to like filmmaker driven stuff. It's so funny when people are like, do you wanna direct? And all I can think about is there are so many better people out right. there who should be directing. I don't think that's, for, that's, that's what I should be focusing on. Well, not to mention that's like two or three years of your life. And it's like, I'd rather at this point in my career, like work with the best for like four different amazing directors in yeah. the next three years. Yeah, and there are some filmmakers that I really, right, I'm, I have projects that hopefully end up coming together with, because I think they're so talented and they they haven't had the opportunity to do narrative fiction, or not, I mean narrative features. features yeah. um, and so there's there's that too, and it's like these people I think are am like amazing, and yeah. they are about, I wanna be a part of that opportunity for them. Not like saying I'm the opportunity, but say I want, I want to be a part of, See I want to have the opportunity yep. of getting to work with them while they get to have so much more. Well, it's also striking to see sort of like where your career coincided with the evolution of how movies and TV are made. Because, oh, it's been so bizarre. Because when we started talking yeah. and when you, you know, were the Sundance queen no in the streaming beginning. No services. <laughs> did not exist. But like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and those movies... Um, they don't exist, or they exist, but they're few and far between now. The ones you were making, or yeah. they're streamers. And yeah, or they become they become something you stream, not really see in a theater, 
Um, I mean, theaters have closed. I mean, the yeah. theaters have closed. I mean, it's really sad. Uh, I do think that because of all that, though, I have to hope that because pendulums always have to swing yeah. back, that we are getting back to that. I also think that um, it's it's harder to make a movie for like a middle budget and it's actually a little bit easier to figure it out for something smaller. Right. And I do think there's going to be some really creative and there has been some really creative filmmaking like Sanctuary. I fucking oh, love it. Margaret Qualley. Yeah. And that's yeah, like I, one, that. I don't know. I don't know if he built the set, found the set or just like, I don't know if it was a location or if it was the whole thing was a stage, but it's like a, did you see it? I haven't seen you it. You haven't seen it. It's, it's contained. And I am like, I just think it's contained and it's beautiful. And I'm assuming he like elevated the budget beyond with just being um, visually very creative. And so I'm really inspired when I see things like that. And so I hope it just kind of swings back in that way. Happy Sad Confused is all about picking the brains of the best and brightest in the world about their respective crafts. And that's why Masterclass is such a fantastic fit for Happy Sad Confused. Masterclass is something I know from experience is a fantastic resource. Over 180 classes at your disposal from a range of world-class instructors. I know from experience. I have learned how to train my dog from the great Brandon McMillan. I have learned acting tips from Samuel L. Jackson that have informed the conducting of this podcast. There is so much opportunity for you with Masterclass. It is accessible on your phone, on the web, on smart TVs, anything you need, a variety of topics, all taught by world-class instructors at the top of their fields. Each class is broken out into individual video lessons, usually around just 10 minutes long. You can learn at your own pace. There are supplemental materials. It is fantastic, guys. I highly recommend you check out Masterclass. You can get unlimited access to every class. And as a Happy Sad Confused listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. So go to masterclass.com slash HSC and now that's masterclass.com slash HSC for 15% off Masterclass today. Do you still audition? I don't really. I, I, the last time I auditioned was because I was trying to convince someone who didn't want to hire me to hire me. And I've never done a self tape at home before. It was like a COVID thing. It's like now what actors do all the time, yeah. which I, sounds awful because the I love auditioning in person so much. Sure. I didn't even like t going to tape at like my agent's office or something. And now that I have to do it, you have to do it. You're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. So that was a painful experience. And then sh the director was also like, no, I'm serious. I didn't want to hire you. So there is so there is that. But that was my last audition. How did that work out? Well, I just didn't get it. It's OK. I didn't get it. Okay. That's fine. Okay. It, the movie did very well. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Sore point. Uh, did I see it? No. <laughs> did I love the script? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Can you clear up a speaking of audition thing? Because again, yeah. another topic we talked about way back when was Star Wars. You were a Star Wars fan growing up. Oh yeah. And you I don't really know what's going on right now with Star Wars, but I still love four I five. I barely six. do. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. But um but back in the day you were saying how you'd seen sides of actors that had been like friends that had auditioned. And then there was like a report over the years that you had to pass on auditioning for Force Awakens because of Age of Ultron. I do, I never had an audition for that. Okay. That wasn't even in the ether no. or not timing wise, not mm -hmm. the right thing. But fun rumor. Good rumor, right? <laughs> <laughs> I bet the internet's filled with them. <laughs> so for the reasons we just discussed, though, that's yes. that would be a vexing kind of question, right? Like the love of Star Wars versus signing on for something that can take up your life for another decade. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I would do that right now. Right. Uh, yeah, it's like even like an ongoing television series that that to me sounds like a hard thing to say yes to, even though I wish Love and Death had a second season because I just had so much fun playing this part, which is you know weird, but true. Do, do you have a morning period after a, a project wraps? Like what's your like kind of go back to reality um, process I think generally? When we wrapped, I think we went straight into press for Doctor Strange. Okay. Uh, yeah, I ha I mean, I think it creeps up on me. I don't know how to like move on. Uh, it creeps up on me later that, and it was funny, it was when we were in South by Southwest for the premiere 
or the like first screening or something, whatever you would call it, um, of of Love and Death, David E. Kelly after afterwards we were having this like little dinner thing. I'm calling it a dinner thing because we were standing, not sitting. So it's like a dinner thing. <laughs> it's a dinner. buffet line? Where yeah, we? <laughs> yeah, kind of. It was like outside and we were standing around. And he asked me um, if I missed candy. And he was like trying, he was like kind of cheeky when he asked me that. And he knew what I was going to, I mean, I deeply miss playing this part. And there's a big part of me that wishes it was if, um, fictional show because I would love it is actually a character I'd love to return to I, I noticed something that slipped by me was you you had a book out last year you had a children's book you had a children's Hattie book Hermione. yes which as I understand it was one of the goals is about um helping kids deal with anxiety yes it's giving them the uh the emotional language tools um for young young ages has anxiety been something that you dealt with growing up that you still kind of wrestle Not with when i was a kid it just all of a sudden hit me when i was 21 or 22 i just started having panic attacks and so i didn't i never had anxiety i never had panic attacks and nor did i know a word for it right so i instead you know got a cat scan and got my blood work done and got my heart looked at and was this I, after a specific like moment like an, you had no what, it, you was, was... I, it just happened one dinner oh, I wow. just like literally just came over me and then it just didn't stop happening yeah and so I saw an internist and uh and it, it just ended up that I like the internist came in and was like I think you're just having a case of good old-fashioned panic attacks <laughs> and he was like this really old man you know it was, it's like what are you talking about panic attacks yeah. I don't have that like I don't have anxiety I don't I didn't have those kinds of things uh as a kid uh it just all of a sudden hit me one day it was very weird and uh and I feel like I do have a, I learned a lot of tools on how to deal with it without medication. Um, although I think medication is a very helpful tool. I didn't, I didn't want, I didn't want to be on medication because I was scared of medication. It's <laughs> <laughs> a cascading problem. So maybe I do have anxiety. I have anxiety um, about medication for anxiety. I'm afraid of everything. <laughs> I don't like roller coasters. I don't like going fast. I'm going to die. So maybe I did have a lot of anxiety as a child and I just didn't know. Right. Buried. <laughs> Not so deep. Um, should I be worried that there's, I think this is like the first time we've chatted where there's nothing on the upcoming there's resume. There's nothing on the upcoming resume. I am so unemployed. Good for you. Take I mean, a, take I a don't breather. want to, I don't really want to be. It's just that everything fell apart. <laughs> Come at the world or your career no, or life. My career is falling apart <laughs> oh, no. at the seams. Oh, well. No, there was, Good there run. was like one thing I was supposed yeah. to do and it didn't work out because uh, actor availability. And then there's another thing that was supposed to go through and then the dates didn't work and then financing. And it's just a wild world with the strikes about to happen. <laughs> right, right. So it's just an odd time, I think, for our industry to to make things happen right now. Fair enough. Well, you can take a breather. You can expand the, co the yeah. cooking repertoire. Are you still... I'm learning a lot this time off. It's, it's it's constructive time. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, let's do, um, let's wrap with the happy second fused profoundly random questionnaire. Okay. Some random questions for you. Dogs or cats, Lizzie? Dogs. That's correct, yeah. Um, what's the wallpaper on your phone? It's um, a close-up shot of a black silk fabric. <laughs> Maybe you, sh you should consider the medication. You should. <laughs> it's like a really pretty, like, yeah. you know, silk like hits light and it's like, yeah. so it's a pretty fabric. So it just looks like a pretty, it's not just black, you know, it's like textured black right. fabric. Yeah, it's soothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you rather have dinner with Vin Diesel or Daniel Day-Lewis? Daniel Day. It's the last actor you were mistaken for. Uh, my, myself. <laughs> I, I don't remember. I don't think I've I've been mistaken for many other people. Besides, um, are you an Olsen twin, or girl, or sister, or something? Oh no, people say are you an Olsen sister. And I say, am I a twin? And and then I this say, is, no, I'm not a twin. You you're engaging. You're making this a dialogue. Yes. We're just <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's short answers. No, I meant with the person, oh, with yeah, that yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they say, are you an Olsen sister, it becomes like, a, I don't know. Is this a trick question? Are you asking me, do you know, do you have an idea of what our first names are? Like, I'm not sure right. what's what we're trying to talk about here. It, but yeah, no, I, th I think that's it, really. 
<laughs> <laughs> if you were to host the podcast, what would the topic be? Have you considered it? I um I would like to. This was something I came up with while we were filming Love and Death, and it was like two a.m. and we were filming on the back porch, and I started um assuming there was like a really loud party happening in a house next door. Just not even a party. It was like five very drunk people outside being very loud, and our location our locations department is very good at making sure these people are comfortable when we're shooting sure. for them to be quiet. Yes. And they didn't want to do that. And so I started guessing the type of drinks that they were having um, based on their personalities. And I really thought that could be a fun entry point to discussions is making assumptions about people, which is, you know, something we should definitely do more Always. of. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and um, ascribing a sort of uh, wine or cocktail like or drink to them. And then that could maybe open up a conversation where you actually have like winemakers come in and talk about stuff. Green light. And it, so I just started, so I started talking about everyone's, what if everyone were a drink, what they, what they would be that night. Oh, okay. Well, let's just open this up then briefly. <laughs> Okay, so what, what what is your alcoholic, uh, what's your adult beverage of choice? Uh, what defines you? It depends, really. Yeah? Yeah, it really it really depends. Sometimes it could just be some wine, but I'm very picky about my wine. Okay. Um, and then if I'm feeling fun, and I have to be careful because you don't want to be too much fun because no, just... then you stop being fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tipping point. I like vodka martinis. Okay. And I like um, mezcal sours. Mezcal sour? Yeah, with the egg white. I, I, I made a horrible decision about a decade ago of having a shot of mezcal, which should not be ever done in a Anytime shot Anytime anyone has ever given me a shot oh, yeah, no. since college, no, it's, I sip it. You're mature. You're smart. <laughs> you're, this is the right call. I've never understood. I just, thirst, or, 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 I just learned recently <laughs> yeah. about icing. I don't know. The, I'm Do you an know old what man. Smirnoff I ice is? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's when you find one and... Apparently, apparently, when you find one, you're supposed to get on your knee and chug it. No. And they're like, it's been a thing for 10 years. And I was like, S wait, oh, I, first off, <laughs> didn't know. They're like, have you never watched television? It's all over commercials. Never seen a commercial where right. some, this happens to someone. And also, who, who said? Like, and why would I have to? No. And someone tried to ice me. And <laughs> they were like, you have to drink it now. And I was like, in what world would I have to do anything? <laughs> I have free will. I'm a grown woman. So you don't know about this either. No, but I'm 75 years old. Me too. I don't. <laughs> uh, in the spirit of happy, sad, confused, what actor makes you happy? Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. She just iced. She just. <laughs> uh, an actor that makes me happy. Oh, gosh. They oh. pop up on screen. This is. I'm in for a treat. I'm going to. They pop up on screen. I'm like, oh, I got to watch this. Diane Keaton? Yeah, she came up recently. She Someone else actually happy. said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she makes me happy. Even when she cried, she makes me laugh. A uh, movie that makes you sad? Mm, what's a movie that makes me sad? Uh, the way we were <laughs> every time. Yeah? I, I really lose it every time in that movie. Yeah. Uh, and finally, a food that makes you confused. Innards. <laughs> <laughs> Just generally innards of anything, like the intestinal tract, the... Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a weird choice. Yeah. And apparently it's a delicacy. Delicacy, right. Well... But that is confusing to me. Yeah. Because I don't want to know what's going on inside the people's <laughs> intestines, and nor do I want to eat it. People's intestines. Or, well, that's that's a really confusing <laughs> <laughs> cannibalism. Very confusing, according but, to Liz. But I mean, but like really, yeah. Like a, I mean, what animals' intestines is it? Is it a cow's? cow? Probably, I would think. Yeah. I don't want to know about it. No. no. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, congratulations on the new limited series. It's it's not on Max. It's on the HBO Max. HBO Max. Everybody Love check it out. Love and Death. It's fantastic work from the great Lizzie Olson, and it's a um, yeah too insane to be believed story that is actually true. Um, and yeah, don't read it all. Don't yeah, read the don't whole read thing. Yeah, don't read about it. Just watch Just, it. We, we gave him the tease, right? We gave him enough. Yes. All right, we're yes. gonna go hit an amusement park and have some innards right now. Yeah, disgusting. <laughs>
That's awful uh, combination. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Thank you for having me after all these years. Oh, finally. Cool. We did it. Wow, I can't believe we did this in 2015. Isn't that crazy? That's very crazy. Life has changed. And so ends another edition of Happy, Sad, Confused. Remember to review, rate, and subscribe to this show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm a big podcast person. I'm Daisy Ridley, and I definitely wasn't pressured to do this by Josh. Ha, ha, ha.